Hello, friends and family. Welcome to Come Sit at My Table. We are Tom and Melissa, and we are thrilled that you have joined us for this video. Today is Saturday, and so it's a little bit of a slower day for us. We have been working at school almost every day this week, and so today we're just kind of taking it easy, chilling out. We are going to go see a movie later this afternoon, but because we're going to be here most of the day, we decided to take advantage of our time at home, and we're going to fix something that we really enjoy eating. That is barbecued ribs. Barbecued ribs are one of those things that you just cannot rush. And there are lots of different ways you can fix them. People like to fix them on the grill, and we've done that, and we like them that way. They're not quite as tender when I do them that way. Maybe it's my own fault because I try to rush them, but they're really good on the grill. Some people fix them in a crock pot, and I've done that. That's a very simple way because you just cut them into two or three bone pieces, put them in a crock pot with some barbecue sauce and let them cook it on low and slow. But many, many, many years ago, a friend of ours named Debbie Morton gave me this recipe or this method, I guess, for cooking ribs. It is so simple and I'm telling you they are fall off the bone delicious. They are wonderful cooked this way. And you do it in the oven. So it's not like you're standing over a grill. It's not like you're taking hours and hours to watch them. You just fix them, put them in the oven, and let them bake. And I'm going to tell you, they are delicious. We rarely fix ribs any other way besides this way now. So here's what you're going to need to do Debbie's barbecued ribs. First, you're going to need a piece of foil because you are going to have to cover these while they bake. So just fix yourself a piece of foil. Now, normally I have the wide foil, and so it just takes one piece, but I ran out and forgot to put it on the grocery list. So I just took two pieces of short foil and I've kind of folded those together and made myself a wider piece. You're going to need salt. And you won't need a lot of salt, but you will need some. You're going to lightly salt them. You need your favorite barbecue sauce. Ours just happens to be Sweet Baby Ray's. Well, actually, we like a lot of different barbecue sauces, but this is definitely one of our very favorites. And of course, you're going to need a rack of ribs. Now, these are baby back ribs, and they came from Costco. This is the package they came in. They are called pork loin back ribs. I wasn't really sure the first time I bought these if they were baby back ribs, so I had to get on Google while I was standing in Costco and look it up. And sure enough, pork loin back ribs are baby back ribs. Sometimes baby back ribs are also just called loin ribs or back ribs. But if you shop at Costco and you want baby back ribs, look for the one called pork loin back ribs. Now, there are lots of different kinds of ribs. One of my favorites many years ago were country ribs. They are big ribs with lots of meat on them, um, and you can fix them in the oven on a low temperature for several hours. They're delicious too, but they're not baby back ribs. There's also spare ribs. And they're very similar to baby back ribs. They're just not quite as meaty. Baby back ribs have a little more meat on them than spare ribs. Baby back ribs have meat between the bones and on top of the bone. So it's just your preference. Whatever kind of ribs you like, that's what you should get. But I, think it, it, I don't think it really matters which kind of ribs you get. You can still use this method. But I'm going to tell you, it works really well with baby back ribs. Now, on the back of your ribs, on the bone side, there could be a uh, membrane that you'll have to pull off. This does not have it. This is just the fat that's on the back. But if there's a white membrane, you will have to try to get it loose on the corner and pull that off. It should be fairly easy to get it off in one piece, 
There is a little trick to that. If you take a dry paper towel and can get a hold of the corner of that membrane and just grip it with that dry paper towel, you should be able to pull it off. And it usually will come off in one piece. Sometimes you might have to do it in a couple of pieces. But check the back because you don't want that membrane on there when you're eating the ribs. It's really tough. These just don't happen to have it. They've already removed that. Now, the way we're going to fix these is that we're going to salt the front and the back, and then we're going to put barbecue sauce on them. Now, I'm going to wash my hands. I am dealing with raw meat, so I'm going to have to do that a time or two. Anytime you are working with raw meat, you should make sure you're washing your hands constantly. You do not want to touch anything else after you've touched that raw meat. All right, so I'm going to use a fork. I wouldn't normally do this, but I think it'll be easier than trying to wash my hands a bunch of times. So we're just going to take some salt and lightly salt each side of the pork. Salt that side. Let's see if I can flip this over using a fork. That might be the first time in my life I flipped ribs with a fork. And we'll slightly salt this side. Just a pinch on each side. Okay. Then you're going to brush the, that with barbecue sauce. And you probably want to start on the back because you do want this bone side down while it bakes. So if you put it on this side first and brush it on, then you can just flip it over one time and it'll be in the right position. Now you don't have to completely cover it. It doesn't have to be drenched. You just want some barbecue sauce on everything so that it's getting that flavor into the meat as it's baking. We will put more barbecue sauce on it at the end um, before we finish with it under the broiler. Yes, we will broil these just to caramelize the top of them. So we have some barbecue sauce on there. Need some over on the edges here. So let's get some all over it. Okay. And let's flip this over. Now we want to make sure we completely cover the top with barbecue sauce. You will pretty much use your whole bottle of barbecue sauce. This is a 28 ounce bottle. And you're going to pretty much use that whole thing to do these ribs. I, let me back that up. I actually try to save a little bit of it because we like to put some in a bowl and serve it on the side so that if we want more barbecue sauce, we can kind of dip it so, you know, that's up to you. But I do usually try to save just a little bit of it so that I can have some dipping sauce. I like them wet. Yeah, we do like, like them wet. Dry we uh, Actually, any meat that we eat, we like wet, don't we? We do. We even like our pizza really wet. We like lots of sauce on pizza. Okay, that looks pretty good. Maybe just a little bit more just to make sure it's good and covered. As it bakes, this barbecue sauce will kind of, I guess, melt. It will kind of liquefy and it will run over your barbecue, barbecued ribs. So it's okay to put some in the middle. All right, I'm gonna get rid of those. Put those right there for later. Put my lid on my barbecue sauce. And now, I'm going to cover the ribs. <clears throat> now, you don't have to cover them tightly. You just want something over them to hold that steam in while they cook. Just to make sure they're 
and they're good. No, no holes showing because you do want that steam to stay in those ribs. <clears throat> now we're going to start these on 400 degrees. I've already got my oven preheated to 400. I will set my timer for 30 minutes. At the end of that 30 minutes, I'm going to turn my oven down to 325. I will not open the oven door to look at them, check on them, just leave the door closed. All you have to do is just turn it from 400 down to 325 and leave it for three hours. I know that's a long time, but you can go do other things. You don't have to stand and watch them. So start them on 400 for 30 minutes, turn it down to 325, and leave them for three more hours. They will be falling off the bone. You're gonna love these ribs. Okay, let me get them in. Um, I will set the timer, and we will be back when the ribs are done about three and a half hours from now. Our ribs have baked for three and a half hours, and now we've taken them out, and I'm going to cover them with barbecue sauce. And yes, I'm putting a lot on them. You want a lot of sauce on them for this final step. You're going to just kind of dab it all over them. You want it pretty thick because we're going to put it under the broiler and let it kind of caramelize. We're just going to let it get really hot and bubbly and delicious under that broiler. So just pile it on. Notice that I'm not brushing it on, I'm just kind of spreading it by dabbing it all over the ribs. Make sure you get it down on the sides too. Just a little bit more right there. Spread that out just a hair. We need some up here. Okay. And a little extra right here on the end. Don't be afraid to put it on. It's just barbecue sauce. Okay. Might put just a little bit more down the sides and middle. A little right there. Okay. Now we're going under the broiler until they are bubbly and kind of caramelized. So in we go. I did have to move them from the bottom oven to the top oven because our bottom oven does not have a broiler. So in they go. Notice that I did not put any liquid on those when we bake them. Sometimes when you bake ribs, there will be a lot of juice in the pan when you finish baking them. Other times like today, there's barely anything in the bottom of the pan. There was a little bit of juice, but not even enough for me to drain off. So you do not put any liquid in the pan with your ribs when you start baking them. But if there is juice on them, when you take them out after three and a half hours, you will want to drain that off before you put more barbecue sauce and put them back into the broiler. If it's just a little bit, you don't have to. All right, we're gonna let these broil, and when they're finished, we'll bring you back and let you see what they look like. The ribs are ready, and I'm ready too. I'm ready to eat some of these. We just broiled these for, I don't know how long, Melissa, Five, five minutes, minutes, maybe, yes. About five minutes until the barbecue sauce was caramelized and took them out, and now they're ready to eat. I have let them cool for just a couple minutes so it won't burn me when I eat them. I want you to look at this. I want you to look how tender these are. Look at that. They literally just fall apart. They literally can just be pulled apart. They're that tender. It's just crazy how, how tender they become in the oven. And the bones just twist right out of them. All you have to do is just twist and the bone falls right out. Isn't that crazy? But that tells you you've got good tender meat. Now, let's try a bite. 
And I'm just going to tell you, there is no way to eat barbecued ribs other than with your hands. I probably will use a fork, but <laughs> I will. You know I will. Don't use a fork. Use your fingers. Wow. That is tender as a mother's love. These are so good. I see my rack. Where's yours? I have a feeling I'm going to be in trouble. <laughs> I did ask her if she wanted to bite before we started. And she said no, she would get hers when we eat. That's a little minute. messy to try to do when hold this camera. I know this slogan's already been taken, but these are finger licking good. Mm. Wow. That is so good. If you want good barbecued ribs, but you don't want to stand over a grill forever, this is the way to do them. Put them in the oven, let them bake. All right, thank you for watching our videos. Please go right below the video here and click the thumbs up just so you know we get a like. The more people we get to click like, the more our video gets shown. On the other side, if you've not already, please click the subscribe button and become one of our subscribers. It's totally free, it costs you nothing. It just means you've joined our channel. And right beside of it is a little bell it's called a notification bell. You can click it and click the word all. That way, every time we add a video, you'll get a notification telling you there's a new one up. And we sure would appreciate it if you would share our videos with your friends and family and neighbors. There's a share button right down below the video here in the middle. And remember that Melissa always puts the written recipe in the description box right below this video where you see the title of the video. If you'll click that box, it will expand, and the written recipe is right there so that you'll have it. All right, thanks again. We appreciate you watching our videos. And remember, you are always welcome to come sit at my table. Have a great day. Go eat some ribs. <laughs>